John from Uganda, well actually East Africa, she has recently moved to Uganda and has been working in Kenya previously, and John Daly from Fair Trademark Ireland, Jerry Fulton, Chamber of Commerce, and Sister Nora Burke, who is very involved in the Fair Trade um, campaign house. locally. And Whereby the life became difficult, the people could not afford anything because the coffee could not sell anywhere. The tea, what happens, yes, tea was picked. And then there came a time there was also a problem with the prices of tea. They are always paid low. However much they try to on the bananas, on the chocolate, and so on. That means that this banana was ethically grown. It is observing the minimum standards. The quality control is there. The, the care for the people is we send here flour there is improvement. with fair trade uh, logo. Ten percent of the wholesale uh, amount is remitted back to those companies in the south, those who grow. And what what, what does that money do? That ten percent remitted will be put uh, in a separate account whereby... Where in November 1996, when Bewley's decided to import, agreed to import two tons of fair trade coffee. Um, that's 14 years ago now, uh, and at the time we thought it was a fantastic achievement to get two tons of coffee imported. Uh, now there are hundreds of tons of coffee being imported into fair trade coffee being imported into Ireland, and lots of other products as well. So it's the normal one, or especially in the last year or two, the grown export product, export earner, in those countries, and it is in every case the largest employer by far in all those countries. So we're talking about something that affects the lives of huge, huge numbers of people, most of whom live in pretty poor conditions. Uh, the average income, and it varies a little bit from country to country, Ethiopia being the poorest of the countries in, 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 in question, and Kenya being the best, the, the, often not death, but the best of, of their very poor facilities, so the pair and school uniforms still have to be bought by the parents. So they're really, the only cash income they have to pay for the school books, the school uniforms, the pencils, is what they get from selling their few, in the case of small farmers, from selling their, their, their few coffee beans or, or their, their other agricultural produce, or in the case of workers on plantations, from the, 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 the tea that they pick every day. So that's why we focus particularly on a number of very basic... Does that make a difference? Tea, um, does, uh, I suppose it's the question all the time. Well, the answer is, Hella has told us, the kind of difference that it does make. And people often wonder how just a cent or two on my, on my coffee or my packet of tea is going to make, it, it can't mean that much. Well, the truth is, it actually does mean that much. And if, the, if what your total income is in, in, in the course of a year is less than a euro a day, you can imagine that even five or six cents or three or four cents multiplied by 365 is actually a huge change in your income and a huge change in your standard of living. Explain the, the value of fair trade. So we decide to support fair trade in whatever way we can in the chamber, uh, whether it's emailing members, members with, with information or encouraging them, whatever way we can. Uh, I know we had communication back from, from Little out there. Who, uh, yeah. yeah, Little out there. Yeah, we we yeah. Email back to say, okay, well, they are carrying the stuff and whatever. So that's very important. Um, that's where the real work is done. So what I say is we're pleased to support the concept wherever we can. We sponsored a small event here some time ago, there's things like that we can do. Um, and the thing which we would like to see is to move the project on to the next level, which is to achieve fair trade status for Carrick. Now, Sister and Dermot and a number of other people locally have uh, the parish as fair trade. So it's the next hurdle to be overcome. And we found that Beecher's Brook here and there with a couple of, of uh, attempts to move it on. But, uh, I know Sister is working on it and Ray is working on it. And I say, that's all we can do is support it. And he, there's no need to say anything about it. It's all been said. You've heard it. So you know where we're coming from and why we're pleased to support it. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.
cards come from. But first of all, all the conditions that they have to meet, and there's a long list of them in terms of not using you know, backhand chemicals and stuff like that on farms. All that's checked and audited regularly by, by trained, qualified auditors. There are regular inspections and plantations for farms. So, McFly, either 4,000, 5,000, or 2,000 acres depending on the size of the plantation or whatever with that number. So you will find out how many people you are trying to help through the fair trade At this side of the world, the importers also all have to sign agreements. Anybody who's done stuff with the, with the fair trade market <coughs> signs an agreement with us or our equivalent in another country. And all of that is all to this end. So for example, if beauties are selling copies of the fair trade maps. Relating to what you were just, I'm just curious as to how difficult the process is for a small farmer to be, be certified in fair trade if it's very costly, or if there's any help for them to change their farming practices. Uh, normally what happens is that these small farmers come into groups to form associations or cooperatives. Yeah. And that is how their certification goes easily. Because a small farmer will produce a very little, but that cannot be enough to yeah. meet export uh, yeah. demands. So they come together, and there may be 20 or 30 or 50 farmers all growing coffee. They will come together, form association. But does each of them have to get their own fair trade certificate, or as no, a they, they will get as an association oh, okay. or as a cooperative okay. certification. Yeah. yeah, so they can share the cost. Yes, okay. the premium also improved the infrastructure of that community. Mm -hmm. yes. We need to remind you for the next session because it starts in about a quarter of an hour. Okay. So we'll <laughs> just rest you and I just ask you to show your thanks to Hella first of all. And um, I want to present you with a little piece of handcrafted um, jewellery from the <coughs> shop cross. <laughs> this is for John, ah. a little bit about Leitrim. I want to take some <laughs> stuff back to tell Dublin about Leitrim. <laughs> how good it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> Photos. Keith, will I get some of those for our records? You will do it. Thanks a million. <laughs> because I have to send Fair Trade Ireland know that we're acting down the territory channel. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.